Welcome to the channel, welcome to our homestead. We are in our solar room today. We're in the process of making some upgrades and cleaning things up. But we are gonna show you something today I think you're gonna like. Let's get going. And our big upgrade today is this brand new auto transformer by GrowWatt. This is made to be compatible with the 240 volt grow watt inverters, but it can be used with any 240 volt inverters where you need to produce a 120 volt leg. So I'm gonna explain why I'm adding it and how our system is working right now. And then in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how to install it. So like I said, the job of the auto transformer is to split the 240 volts coming from the inverters into two 120 volt legs. So your house here in the US can use that 120 volt power for your 120 volt loads. So there's some concern that if this auto transformer was to go down, trip a breaker or just break, then you'd be sending 240 volts from your inverters straight to your 120 volt loads in the house. And that could damage motors, blow light bulbs, and things like that. But in the entire time that this combination has been sold, there has been no recorded instance of that happening. So that's great, but people want some peace of mind. So some people have added two of these auto transformers, which is not necessary, but just in case one goes down, you've got the other as backup. And on this solar edge transformer, you've got basically upstream and downstream coming through the same wires. Let's talk about the differences with the new GrowWatt transformer, why it's different, and then we are going to install it. And we are then going to keep this solar edge also installed as a backup. So here's the new GrowWatt, and you can see it on the inside the coils are considerably uh, bigger. And we also have an input and an output right here on the bottom. So your upstream and your downstream are going to be on separate lines. And in our subpanel breaker box, the way our system is set up, we're gonna have two breakers, one for the input and one for the output. So additionally, what makes this a lot nicer, your coils are bigger, you've got uh, grounding to every part of the housing itself or the case. This is um, water resistant. I don't know the rating on it, but it looks like it's pretty solid. And you've got these locking uh, clamps here. So you can lock this down tight. So this auto transformer is creating a true split phase 120 and 120 from our 240 volt single phase inverters. And unlike other auto transformers on the market, this virtually makes it impossible to allow an open ground with your load center. And by separating the incoming inverting power and the outgoing split phase power, in the auto transformer, uh, GrowWatts eliminated the possibility of any independent transformer trips due to overload. And you can put an extra breaker between the inverter and the transformer that'll completely disable any output in the event of something bad happening. All right, let's get this thing up and connected for you. So let's mount it on the wall with these anchors. This weighs about 35 pounds, so get something that's appropriate. And we have 10 and 13 sixteenths between each one of these holes. And then it's recommended that you leave 30 centimeters or about 12 inches between the auto transformer and anything else on your wall. And then additionally, we're gonna be mounting it the same as everything else on some concrete backer board. As you can see, we got it mounted up here on the wall and that 12 inch clearance is probably so the door can open a full 180 degrees, which I think is NEC code. Anyway, that's open, it's mounted. Now let's hook it up. Over here in our sub panel, we have two 25 amp double pole breakers and we will be connecting both the output to one and the input to the other. And to do that, we're gonna use eight gauge THHN. Now, if you are interested in how we set up our entire system, go click on the playlist at the top of the screen. That is our entire series for this system. All right, let's get this wire measured and stripped. What I'm also gonna do is put some flexible conduit between the auto transformer and the sub panel. To do that, you're gonna to need to remove these little grommets that were in here 
and replace them with your conduit fittings. So for our ground, we're going to need a copper lug on this. Just grab your crimping tool and a lug, get it on there. So we have our wires mostly run. Let me bring you in here and show you a step that you absolutely cannot miss. So here is our GrowWatt 5000 ES US model inverter. And we've got ground, line, and neutral, but that's actually ground, line one, and line two. So as we follow through over to our sub, we've got line one and line two. Line one, line two for the second inverter over there. Our grounds are grounded outside, and we talked about that in a previous video. Over to here, we're gonna have to maintain the same. So our reds are gonna be line one on the top, blacks line two on the bottom, and that's gonna translate over into this new uh, auto transformer. And it's the same on the auto transformer by Solar Edge. Line one is red, line two is black, neutral is neutral. So for our neutral from the new GrowWatt transformer, we're gonna connect into our neutral uh, bus bar here. We've got our grounds and the grounded bus bar, and then everything is grounded back to our main panel, and all the uh, neutrals are back to our main panel, which is where our ground neutral bond happens. Now I know what you're gonna say. Why are the inverters grounded outside to a secondary rod? Well, it's a big discussion that's over on the DIY Solar Forum with Signature Solar, with Will Prouse, with David Potts, with a lot of other people on there. And there's some disagreement about it, some agreement about it. This is confirmed five times through Signature Solar that that's the way it should be done for my system. My system is a total off-grid system that acts like a generator. And I need to throw an interlock switch on the main panel coming in from the grid, which is still connected, where I flip the grid completely off in this on. If you have any questions about that, email Signature Solar. So once again, all my line ones are red. So we got line one to line one, same for the other inverter, same for our solar edge auto transformer over to here. And then same, same running through to our new auto transformer. That labeling there is a little confusing. It says line one in neutral coming in for the input but this is line one on this side. You can see the little jumper wire over to line one on that side. So that'll indicate whether you're connected correctly. So all line ones are red. All line twos are black. Neutrals to neutrals, grounds to grounds. Let's get these knockouts out of this panel so I can fit it back on and then we'll fire it up. So everything's up and running, it's working fine. I feel that slight vibration in here and can hear that little bit of hum that comes out of a transformer. This one actually is not on, it did not kick on. This one will just remain here for a backup just in case anything happens to that one, which I don't see happening. But it's nice to have this one too, just in case. So I shouldn't get any 240 volt surges into my 120 volt loads. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about what solar really is for the homeowner and what it is not. You'll be surprised. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.